This is the part of the YouTube video that we call the hook, and the point is to do something short and pithy that makes you want to watch the rest of the video. And I had something planned out, it was already filmed, it was all about seahorses. I figured, hey, people want to know about seahorses, they're going to watch the video. And then I did what may have been the biggest mistake in my reefing life. Do you want to know what it is? Well, obviously I can't tell you right now because then it wouldn't be a hook. You got to keep watching the video to find out. Let's start with a clownfish update here. This is the 14 gallon peninsula tank that I specifically built to house the two longfin clownfish. Well, this guy right here was super being a bully, if you remember, and I had to move him. Of course, it's never gonna focus. So I decided to move the smaller one. So the smaller one, which is now completely finless when it comes to the back fin, is doing well in here. You can see that, no back fin. But what I should have done is I have a breeder box, totally have a breeder box, and I wasn't thinking. And all I had to do was, was take the bully, put him in the breeder box in here, and do that. And now we have a problem. These are my newest anemones. Here, let me see if I can show you. Look at this one. You guys know that to me, this is the second day it's done this. And not just this one. Wide open mouth, deflated. I think it might be some sort of bacterial infection in here. So I need to treat this entire tank with antibiotics, with the Cipro. So I have to move these guys. So I think what I might do is I might move these two back over. I'm gonna move this bully into the clear breeder box and then treat that tank with Cipro. You can see you got some morning sun on them. So look what I did. I set up the prison. Finally, this is the bully fish. So he is now in breeder box prison, probably for a week. I don't know where I'm gonna move him, but if you look in the background, there are the two other clowns. And these two get along really well. So I'm actually just gonna leave them in this tank and then figure out what to do with the bully. Max Spect also sent me some of their coral glue. I kind of like these actually. I usually use like the bigger bottle, but these are kind of nice. So we're gonna use this. And they also sent me these these tongs, which have a little silicone ending. So I think it'll probably have a little better grip. Thank you, Max Spect. And here's what I want to do. Obviously you can see that, that little blasto here. Because of the flow pattern, and you know, I have it on, on as low as it can go, it's getting a little bit blasted right there in the in the front here. You can even see there's a couple new heads growing under there, see those? And I'm worried they're not gonna be able to develop as much. So what I wanna do is I'm going to use that max spec glue and I think there's a good spot right here. And if I just break it off the frag plug, lifting it up just a little bit and putting it on this ledge right here means that that current that's going like this, sweeping down, won't be blasting that as much. So I think that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's try it out. two things about this one. It's extremely thick. So if you don't want extremely thick, don't buy this. Probably the thickest I've used in quite a while. The second issue with this that I just noticed is in order to make it work, all right, you have to un unscrew the cap like this and then you have to take this off and they're all sealed. You know, that that's nothing different. They're all sealed. They have a little foil seal. So you take off this little ring and then you just screw this back on and it's supposed to puncture it. Mine didn't puncture very well. It had like a really, really tiny puncture. So I had to puncture a little bit more. So if it's not coming out very easily, just take a little knife or something and puncture it. The second thing I wanted to point out real quick is this little max spec tongs. It's cool. Don't get me wrong, I like it. It's carbon fiber, super lightweight, plastic, no metal, so it's not gonna rust or anything. It's small, see this? I don't know, it's like a foot long. The opening is that big, just kind of by itself. So for a, for a medium-sized frag plug, what I had to do is I had to put my finger in there to make it wider. They're really good, they're really small. They probably really work well for a frag tank, but if you have to put your hand deep down, you saw me in there, I tried to put it in and I couldn't get enough grip on it. It wasn't quite the right size. So I ended up just putting my hand in anyways. Just a couple notes.
before we move off of the 14 gallon peninsula tank, one of my subscribers a couple weeks ago asked about this light. It's the Reef Breeders the Pico LED. They sell the Pico LED for salt water, fresh water, and then like a refugium. And he asked me, would this be good on this size of a tank? According to the website at Marine Depot, first of all, it only sells for $70. This is an, an, an eight watt light. It's not gonna be like for SPS corals, but is it strong enough for some LPS and softies in a tank this size? So this tank here, it's, oh, my cat is clawing me. This tank here is what? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 inches long. So it's a little bit longer, but it is only 12 inches wide. This light here, let me show you what comes in it. It's, I mean, 70 bucks, it's a good deal. I believe it comes with six LEDs total and a mounting arm. It comes with six LEDs. I believe it has four blue, one UV, and one white. And then it comes with its own small little mounting arm and then a simple on off switch. So you could just leave it on and then put it on one of those Wi-Fi outlets that I constantly use. And I'm assuming it's gonna have to be pretty close to the water line. Let's see here, let's go like this. Yeah, so it's probably only gonna be like four inches above the water line. So let's see how that looks. I, I totally forgot. By the way, thank you, Logan. Logan's the owner of Reef Breeders. It's this one here, four blues, a white, and a, a, a violet or a, or a UV. Before I run the part test, the only real downside is the mounting arm on a peninsula style tank. Right, this is 16 inches, then it's an additional couple inches back here, and the mounting arm is very short. Looks like it's like a foot long. So this would definitely be better to reach the center, because th this isn't the center, the center is like right here, on like a 12 by 12 cube. You could take this, and I've mounted it to the back, but if you put out a notch in the mesh screen, you could mount it another three inches forward, which would then put it centrally located. So you could make it work, definitely. more super quick anemone update. So the next day I had to start treating this tank, but I made a couple changes because the problem was is these three anemones, they didn't do well in shipping, I don't think. They would shrivel up every day and expunge a really dark substance. It looked so bad and I didn't take a video of it yesterday, sorry about that. When they were expunging their stomachs, the biggest problem was that they couldn't get rid of it. It would just stick to their tentacles and they would just stay expunged until they could get rid of it. So the first thing I did here is I went ahead and I changed wave makers. I had a couple of these reef octopus wave makers lying around. I can't even, I don't even know what their name is, but I went ahead and put one of these on and it is, I have it on low, it's putting out a lot more flow than the previous one, and that is helping immensely. And second thing, I did a 100% water change, and I am treating this now with Cipro. It's gonna get a week treatment, the standard one week Cipro treatment, every single day, change the water. I mean, I say 100%, it's really 90%. So here's the funny thing. Some of them look okay, and some of them don't look okay. So here is the green. He's looking okay. He, I haven't really seen much growth, but he's all right. And then we look over here, here's the watermelon. Always stays fluffy, occasionally will expunge its stomach, but overall looking good. The newest one I got from eBay, man, this thing is killing it. I think it's super happy where it is because it gets all of this flow, tons of flow. And then the ones next to it, the ones I've had for quite a while, they're okay. They don't look anything special, but there's that one. And then the greens are just sort of a little bit deflated. Overall, they're all still doing okay. Like I thought, the really small green bubble tip anemones are not thriving and that's expected. See that? They're totally pulled in here. I don't even think I've seen their tentacles in a while. And there's one up here too that's totally pulled in. You can see a couple tentacles right up top. Still positive though, still positive directions for all the NEMS. We got one more project, one more project. So this tank right here, the clownfish harem tank, I have noticed and I'm positing that a couple of anemones aren't as happy because the flow isn't great. I have the one max spec gyre, the XF330, and it pushes water this way, right? That way, right there, down and back. So all the sand is gone from here basically and it's all pushed 
over here. I think, now this could screw things up, I think that if I add more flow, basically another XF30, I could solve the problem. So I went ahead and bought this, right? Now the good thing about these, if you guys know, since I already have one of the XF330s, and I already have the controller for it, all I had to do was buy the pump head itself, which is like less than $150, I think, because I don't need another power source even, and I don't need another controller, because the one controller can control both of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna have the first one mounted here, and then the second one mounted there, and then there's four different settings you can do when you have a primary and secondary relationship. That way the water sometimes will go that way, and the flow will sometimes go that way. The reason I'm a little hesitant to do that right away is because the one thing anemones like is stability. So I'm worried that this may mess them up, but I think it's worth the risk to add a little bit more flow, especially in the areas where the anemones aren't currently getting flow. And then while I was buying that, I made an impulse buy. I had never heard of this before. Check it out, check it out, look at this. Nem Protect. This is made specifically for the Max Spec Gyre. These were a little expensive just for plastic. These are obviously just made on a um, 3D printer. I only bought one set comes apart, see it comes apart, you slide it over, and then it even has like the directional flow head on it. Let's go install that real quick and let's see if I can figure out how to program both of them and get a setting that's gonna work well. wait and see if the new two gyre setup works. I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but the reality is the return pump comes right. It's a little grate back there on the left. That's where all the return water comes out. So no matter what we do, that primary flow is going to come out this way right here, and it's going to shoot around this way. This new gyre can only do so much, but I hope it helps. I hope it brings some flow, especially to this anemone and these green anemones. Time will tell. We'll see if it works. This is everything I know about macroalgae tanks and about seahorse tanks. Macroalgae is inexpensive and it needs nitrates and maybe phosphates. No, it needs phosphates. Definitely phosphates. And seahorses, there's dwarf seahorses and big seahorses and they like cooler temperatures maybe and bigger tanks. Every journey's gotta start somewhere, right? almost 
didn't want to share this with you. No, I take that back. I for sure didn't want to share with you what I did for a few reasons. But then I realized, you know something? Being honest in this hobby is really important. And even though I know I'm going to get negative feedback when I tell you the story of what I did, and not only that, but admitting that this is my fault means that I will likely have to purchase the replacement. I could have lied and said there was damage in shipping, but the reality is I made the mistake, so I have to fix it. I just think that's important to share. So here's what I did. The big box was here. You just saw everything, right? You saw I broke everything down. And then before my wife came home, I was like, you know what? I can move this myself. So what I did, I came up here. I grabbed this bad boy. I set it up right over here. And then I made the first mistake. I was like, oh, I've cut up all the cardboard and all the styrofoam, but there is still the cardboard and styrofoam underneath the tank underneath the tank. Why don't I just pull that styrofoam and that cardboard out and then slide the tank onto the dolly, right? Move it onto the dolly. And this is where I was thinking efficiently and not smartly because this is a pallet. And if you look at the pallet, look at this. This is not even. Look, there are nails. There are nails. And in my haste, I pulled the styrofoam and the cardboard out and I placed the tank directly on the pallet. What, I mean, what was I thinking? That's so freaking idiotic because I, I'm just asking for it to crack. And, and not only was I that stupid, I mean, not only was I that stupid, and please, please be gentle in the comments. I realize this is my fault, I realize, okay? But then to add it, I was like, oh my God, I realized the error I made. I was like, oh no, it's on here. I better fix the problem. So what do I do? I take this 75 gallon glass aquarium, which is way too heavy for one person, and I put the dolly right here. I try to lift it and slide it off myself, scraping it against all of these nails. And of course, what happened? What happened? I chipped the tank. I chipped the tank. Let me show you the chip. Now, I've tried fixing it, so we'll see if it works or not. See right down here? Right here. This section right here chipped off. Chipped off. Okay? So there's a little piece of glass missing right here. If we look inside, there seems to be no problem. So I went ahead and I researched what can I do. And I, I think it's going to hold. I really think it's going to hold. But I went ahead and applied super glue. Super glue. Now all of this, this white film, this will all come off. I'm not worried about any of that. And I applied super glue directly onto this area. It didn't seem to be a problem. Like I, I think it's going to be okay because the seam didn't seem to be affected. But I wanted to reinforce it anyways because if you're thinking about it, this is one of the weakest spots. I mean, yes, these seams right here are probably going to be like the like the weakest spots that are more most prone. But if there's a problem, right, this could not only leak but explode at the bottom. So this tank may be toast. It may be toast, and I might have to shell out another, what, six, $700, $800 just to replace this tank. And this is just a super glue reinforcement. I'm going to leak test it next week, and we'll see whether or not it's okay. But that may have been the most expensive, dumbest mistake I've made yet to date in this hobby.